So hi, everyone. Uh, I am very happy to join this meeting for thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, for everything we provide. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about whether a given subclass of left CE supermodel girls can define one randomness. Uh, first, let me uh, make some review of these concepts, uh, although most of you may have been very familiar with them. Uh, let, a supermarketing guild is a random process who is like a, a gambler. He bets on two outcomes, zero and one. Uh, in general, supermarketing guilds does not necessarily bet on two outcomes, but in this talk, it is restricted to that. And uh, it is called a supermarketing guild instead of marketing guild because the expectation of his money uh, is smaller after he bets. Uh, it's like you are betting in a casino, and uh, the casino will, uh, you know, he will charges you for for some cost. And uh, let's say in this is a is a, a complexity notion. It means that every value of this supermarketing guild can be approximated uh, from left. This supermarketing guild uh, can be seen as a function from the binary string to. Okay, some problem occurs. Let me just uh, fix some technical problem about this audio. Yes, yes, I have not, uh, I have not uh, opened the next slide. I'm just trying to explain some terminology. Uh, I, I am just showing my first slide. Yes, that's, that's, not, a, that's not a problem. Okay, uh, and uh, um, where am I? So uh, it is a function from the binary string to uh, to some value, uh, because uh, for each binary string, it's like a probability event, and uh, the value of this supermarket queue on that event is the money this gambler will have if that e event happens. So this is the uh, introduction of the concepts. Uh, let me. And this is the topic about, about, this, uh, about this talk. Given a subclass of supermolecule, does it define one randomness? Uh, because we, we all know very, uh, we, it is well known that uh, left C supermolecules define one randomness, meaning is for every non one random real X, there is a left C supermolecule succeeding on X. So if, if, if you are a gambler and uh, this X as an event happens, then your money uh, will, roughly speaking, grows very, very large. Uh, is unbounded. So that, that's what I mean by succeeding. Uh, but whether a subclass of FSC supermodeling guild is a completely different question. <clears throat> so why is uh, so why is this question uh, interesting? We have uh, roughly speaking three motivations. Uh, first, can we compare can we define one randomness using uh, computable objects instead of CE objects? Uh, because one randomness is a very important the randomness notion, and uh, a lot of definitions of this effective randomness notion coincide with each other. Uh, but all of these definitions involve CE objects instead of computable objects. So uh, people, I think people have tried a lot to, to see if a uh, computable objects define one randomness. I will. Uh, uh, explain more later. And uh, the second uh, motivation is that uh, can one randomness de be decomposed? Uh, for example, if a left C supermarketing guild So is that everything okay? Uh, if a uh, left C supermarket guild succeed on a real, is it because of its strategy of money allocation or is it because of its choice of outcomes? I will also explain more later. And uh, the third one is uh, about this big open question in computability randomness theory, uh, whether KL randomness is equivalent to one randomness. Uh, it is related uh, well because, you know, this is also this this is also a comparing randomness notion question. Um, 
But you might, you might say that this is bullshit because a lot of questions are comparing randomness question. Uh, why is this particularly related to it? As the others are not so related. Uh, actually, I honestly agree with you. Uh, but uh, after, after a while, I will also introduce uh, the proof uh, of, of, of some of our theorem. And it will be seen after that, uh, that it makes sense to talk about these arguments in this, uh, in this pure randomness question. Uh, although we don't know how to carry them out. For, uh, for none of this, we, do we know how to carry them out? So the, uh, the, the first motivation, uh, well, we have, if there is a long debate of what, what should be defined as, as, as randomness. Um, some people believe that randomness doesn't exist. So intuitively randomness should mean there is no pattern, uh, but what is pattern? There's no, there's no recognized definition. For example, things, strings with some pattern may look like this, zero one, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so forth. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, and so forth. So, uh, so we don't have a recognized definition for pattern, but we have a very good uh, definition for effective pattern. So effective randomness should means no effective pattern. The definition of this effective pattern uh, is as one of these definitions like this, a sequence of CE sets, Vn, so that the open set given rise by Vn is a subset of that of Vn minus one. And moreover, the measure of these open sets converges to zero computably fast. And this is known as a martin log test. So effective randomness can be defined as the following. A real X <clears throat> is martin loaf random, also called Y random, if no martin loaf test succeed on X. So which means X is not a member of this V set. So this Y randomness notion is very, uh, very, very important because a lot of definitions of Y randomness uh, uh, a lot of definitions of effective randomness coincide with each other. Uh, they are equivalent to one randomness. For example, X is one randomness if there is no left CE superbounding gill M succeeding on X, which means the M function restricted on the prefix of X is bounded. So as uh, so because the importance of one randomness, uh, people want to find some computable objects to, to define this one randomness notion because the, it's like a Turing, a church Turing stasis. Uh, I know so many things coincide with one randomness. So it's like, the, uh, it's like a church Turing stasis for randomness notion. So we wanted to find some computable objects defining it. For example, uh, Schnorr randomness. This is just a uh, one randomness where you require the martin loaf test, uh, the set Vn to be computable instead of C, uh, computable in a, uh, in a stronger sense. And also this uh, computable randomness. A real is computable random if there is no computable martin gill succeeding on it. So in this definition, you require the uh, left CE super martin gill to be computable instead of left CE. Uh, but uh, but uh, unfortunately, none of these definitions are as strong as one randomness. Uh, one randomness implies them, but not, not vice versa. So we, we may want to try something else. Uh, instead of restricting the complexity of the objects, uh, we may want to, uh, we may look at whether we can restrict restrict their behaviors. Uh, so the question is, is there a class of left CE supermarket gills whose behavior is somewhat predictable and yet they can define by randomness? <clears throat> well, the second motivation. Uh, 
So given a lambda C super minuscule, uh, if it succeeds Rx, it is because of its choice of outcome or its allocation of money. So what does this mean? Uh, we say this super minuscule M is I set it at a event in sigma. Uh, if and only if M sigma I is bigger than M sigma I minus one. So which means this gambler uh, favors the outcome I instead of I minus one. Uh, so there's a question asking uh, if the two factors can be decomposed, meaning if whether there are two super, let's say supermodern gills, M0 and M1, so that M, M0 always favors outcome zero and M1 always favors outcome one, and yet they succeed, they together succeed on all the reels on which M succeeds. So as we said that uh, I will explain this why it is related to Cal randomness uh, after after well after, after after I give the proof. So all this uh, all these questions brings us to, uh, to brings us to this question whether a uh, given natural subclass of left to say supermarine guild defines one randomness. So I have talked uh, uh, too much about these uh, motivations. Uh, what specific subclass have people considered? Uh, the first subclass, Casa Guild. Uh, this is a class of left C super mining guild where you can uh, computably know which outcome that it favors at each event. For a computable mounting guild, we could definitely uh, computably know whether uh, whether this inequality uh, is true or not. So, what is Casa guild? For a function, for a function, a partial function on the binary string two two, we say m a super mounting guild m is p sided if for every for every binary string in the domain of p, m is p sigma sided at sigma. So in another word, uh, this P is a indicator of how M is sided at each event. And for every sigma not in the domain of P, M is both zero-sided and one-sided. Caster gill uh, is a supermining gill where, for, where there is a partial computable function P so that for every string sigma M is uh, M is P sigma sided at sigma. Uh, so it's sided this indicator is a part of partial computable is a partial computable function. Or in an equivalent way to say that uh, there must be a depth say approximation of this supermolecule M and a, an approximation of this partial function P so that MT is PT sided. Uh, intuitively, this means that for each string sigma, M has one chance to decide its sidedness at sigma. And uh, before it makes that decision, it has to be both zero and one sided. The second one uh, is uh, considered by uh, Mushnik. Uh, we call a supermining gill M to be uh, I betting if for every sigma. So roughly speaking, Mushkil means that a supermodern guild does not bet on certain steps. For LI betting supermodern guild, it means that it does not bet on sigma so that the length of sigma uh, equals to I modulo L. And a Mushkill is simply a left C supermodern gill that is I betting for some L and I. Uh, these are some known results and uh, uh, some questions. So Kasterman uh, just wondered if Kasterman defines one randomness, uh, which in other words, whether for every non one random real X, there is a Kasterman succeeding on X. And uh, Hitchcock, Hitchcock considered a subclass of Caster Gill, where the 
the bias of proportion uh, is satisfies certain certain constraint. And before that, we we know that um, for a single sided molecule uh, in this paper of Van Panias, Fang, and uh, and, and Lewis, um, they have showed that uh, single single sided super molecule uh, if satisfying certain constraint, it will not define one randomness. Uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the Mushkil and the Mushnik showed that uh, two eye biting let to say super molecules they do not define one randomness. Uh, our conclusion is uh, roughly speaking, well, for, there's no natural subclass defining one randomness. For example, we prove that uh. Even the union of castle gills and the mush gill does not define one randomness. Uh, actually, our proof um, almost shows that if a, <clears throat> if a reasonable subclass of delta C super molecules define one randomness, uh, it almost means a single member of that class can do so. A single member of that of that class will succeed on all non one random real. Uh, this is well known for the, the trivial subclass, the whole class of let's say super molecules. Uh, we know there's an optimal let's say super molecule succeeding on all the non one random reals. Uh, and uh, our analysis shows that this is um, almost true for for reasonable subclass. Uh, I will define reasonable um, later. So so how to formalize this uh, this assertion two point one. So let's, let's see. A class of super gill approximations is just a set, big M, of super gill sequences, denoted as this. Uh, we say this big M is non decreasing. Uh, if every sequence, uh, MT dominates MT minus one, uh, we say it's still close. If for every sequence in the big M, Every scaling of this sequence is also a member of M. We say it is subsequence closed uh, if for every sequence in M, every subsequence of this of this M is also a member of the big M. And uh, last, uh, the last the last last property is called homogeneous. Uh, roughly speaking, this means if you look at this big M on a cone, then it is the same as this big M itself. Uh, so what does it mean? So if you have a member in M and now you restrict the, this member on this cone row, uh, because this cone is isomorphism to, to, to this two to the two to the less than omega. So if you even if you restrict it on this cone, it can be seen as a function. Uh, on this uh, by pulling it back using some isomorphism. So uh, so you can, uh, by restricting it on this cone, you will obtain the super molecule sequence defined on this guy. Uh, and it turns out this guy, uh, uh, this the sequence you obtain is also a member of this big M. So that's what we mean by uh, homogeneous. So by reasonable, we just mean uh, Still close, subsequence close, homogeneous, and uh, this this pilar one. Uh, it turns out actually uh, these castle gills can also be seen of uh, can be seen as a pilar one class and so forth, and and also this mush gill. So for any class big M of super Martin gill approximation sequence, uh, we can define this so-called MGIL, which is simply a omega sequence so that every prefix is a member of this big M. And for every sigma, the, li the point-wise limit exists. Uh, so I will... Uh, briefly talk about the proof, um, but not, not because that this talk is supposed to last uh, an hour, uh, but 
showing this proof can give up some clue why this question is related to the KL randomness question. So the proof. Uh, as many questions in computability theory, this question can, uh, this question reduce to a game. Uh, I think many questions in computability theory uh, reduce this to a game mm -hmm. where one player may control some uh, combinatorial objects and the other player, uh, and this player needs to defeat uh, infinitely many um, Turing functionals and uh, his, his opponent will control these um, Turing functionals and so and something like that. And for, for this question, uh, the game is between two players. One player controls the Martin Lip test. Uh, we call this player Alice. And the other players controls the members of this big M. Uh, we call this player Baby. And it is usually very, very helpful to consider the finite version of these kind of games. Uh, and by the way, the KL, KL randomness question can also be think of as a game, uh, which is which I think is well known. So the finite version of this game uh, should is is like the following. Uh, this is a round game. At each round, uh, Alice firstly present uh, enumerates a string, which she has not enumerated before, and the baby should present k many super mining gills, and j. Uh, so that the following is true. But first, a uh, baby has to allocate enough money on some prefix of the string and its numerics. So he has to catch up at roughly speaking. And of course, the sequence baby presents uh, should be a member uh, of this big N. And uh, the target of Alice is to force baby to spend a certain amount of money. See? So these parameters C and K means uh, the money Alice has to force baby to spend. Uh, this N is the levels where Alice enumerates strings. Uh, we also call this two to the N, the board of this game. And the K, the number of super molecules baby presents at each round. So uh, we will let this A set denote the set of strings Alice enumerates when she wins. Uh, of course, Alice always wins uh, because once she enumerates all the strings, uh, baby will have to spend uh, at least one dollar because you know she uh, baby has to spend one dollar on any prefix of the strings Alice enumerates. So by supermodern guild property, uh, if Alice enumerates every strings, then she wins. Uh, this C is always smaller than one. But that's not what we need. Uh, what we need is to show that Alice can win this game with an arbitrary small cost uh, because the measure of the Martin Lip test set Vn uh, is approaching to zero. So we need to show that she has a winning strategy uh, with an arbitrary small cost. Uh, more concretely, uh, we have the following observations uh, given a uh, given a super molecule approximation class big M uh, which is reasonable as we said uh, pi zero one non-decreasing scale close and um, subsequence close and, uh, and homogeneous if Alice has a winning strategy for the M game with an arbitrary small cost then computable M gills do not define one randomness. Uh, this, this, uh, this claim is, uh, is not difficult. Uh, to generate this Martin Lip test for each VN set, Alice will invoke the winning strategy. And uh, if the strategy tells her to enumerate string and she will just enumerate this string. So uh, uh, that's being less off. Uh, but we have to note that uh, this claim only says that Alice has a winning strategy. But in the actual game, in the, in the actual infinite game, uh, the Martin Lip test has to be a CE set. So this winning strategy has to be a computable one. But for this game, if Alice has a winning strategy, it automatically implies that she has a computable winning strategy. So uh, let me briefly explain this. 
usually for two players for this kind of round games, if one if a player can list all the possible game histories, then if he has a winning strategy, it is a computable winning strategy. Uh, this is this is kind of well known uh, because if you can list all those all the game history, possible game histories, then you know this game very well. But this is not uh, this is not exactly for for this game. Uh, this game we know that this game ends in um, finitely many rounds for, for, for this game. But at the, in the actual game, it does not end in finitely many. It, it does not necessarily end up in finitely many rounds because in, in, in this finite version, uh, baby has to like react to the enumeration of sigma uh, immediately at the same round. But in the actual game, baby's response could be very uh, delayed. So this is where we need the subsequence close. Uh, we don't need to look at all the runs. We just need to look at a subset of these runs. And this subset of runs is a finite set. So only these runs uh, matters. Only the runs that baby responds to, to the strings and its number, um, only these runs matters. And then secondly, uh, we know that the action space of baby, uh, which is a space of these guys' lives, uh, is not a finite space. It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a product of uh, of the reals, uh, but uh, fortunately this space is compact, and uh, the winning criterion is continuous in the game history. So that means we can use the compactness argument to show that uh, this 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 action space of baby can be um, finitized. So by this, uh, we actually have at least we'll have a computable winning strategy if she has a winning strategy. Uh, so the, the proof, um, roughly speaking, is by reducing this game uh, into a series of other games, each being more easier for Alice to win. So it's like, if Alice has a winning strategy for this game, then she has a winning strategy for the previous game, and so forth. And in the end of this reduction, uh, we reach at the, the, the following game, uh, this constant game. Uh, I'll just roughly introduce this. Uh, this is also a round game and it's drawn and it's also enumerates a string and the baby will present the super molecules so that they are members of M. This part is the same. But the winning criterion of Alice uh, is different. First, we look at this winning criterion B. This says that Alice wins if the value of the super molecules baby present on two strings Alice present are different enough, then Alice wins. Uh, this is a very, this is in a very big favor of Alice because the difficulty of, the difficulty of this game is because the super minor girls baby present cooperative with each other. So at this string sigma, uh, maybe M0 is big and one is small. And on the other strings, uh, M0 is small and M, M1 is big. So they cooperate each other. And uh, this winning criterion excludes such possibility for them to cooperate each other. So Alice could just defeat them one by one. And then we also have this winning criterion. Um, this winning criterion um, also needs to force baby to spend a, a certain amount of money, but it's not a fixed amount of money. Uh, the more, how much money she has to force baby to spend depends on her cost. The more she costs, the more strings she enumerates, the more money she has to force baby to spend like that. And also some other um, modification on these rules. Uh, this part is like baby has to reach certain values on the strings at its numerate instead of a prefix of the sigma and that the uh, disguise has to be bounded. And uh, this is not all. Uh, because of the because of the this type B winning criterion, uh, we also call it a various winning criterion. Um, we can show that if Alice could win the constant game when baby only present one super then she could win 
constant game, uh, she could win the original game. And, 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 and moreover, the cost is not required to be arbitrarily small, but as long as it is smaller than one. So as long as it does not enumerate all strings, it's, it is okay. Uh, this is a very, very, very big favor for Alice. So in the end, uh, uh, after some, a series of reductions, we have this uh, for every A. So, so roughly speaking, if Alice could win this constant game um, with a cost smaller than one, then she could win this original game with an arbitrary small cost. Uh, here, I, I will explain these parameters. This A uh, is how hard it is to win this constant game. Uh, the bigger this A is, the more difficult it is for Alice to, to win this game. Uh, this A parameter is here. <clears throat> and I also would like to emphasize that these parameters are uh, existence. So as long as for some of this data, Alice could win, it is okay. Uh, this is in a very big favor because it means that Alice could set this data to be uh, very, very small. So it means that uh, the, the Super Mining Girls baby presents has to be arbitrarily close to, to some constant function on the set of strings Alice enumerates. Uh, it 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 uh, the the reduction is not uh, just by one step. Uh, we the game is gradually become like like this like this constant game. Uh, for each ingredients, we modif the, the game is reduced to some weaker game, and it, the constant game is ob obtained at the end. So it's like this. Um, And uh, for Castle Gale or LI betting Super Mountain Gale approximations, it is very easy to win this constant game. Uh, so this is why theorem seven follows, uh, why the union of Castle Gale and uh, Mush Gale does not define by randomness. Uh, we, and uh, moreover, in this proof, uh, for most of the ingredients, we don't take advantage of the specific properties of the of, of Castle Gale or Mush Gale. The specific properties are only used in the last step, how they how Alice could win the constant game for when baby presents one super mining gear. So what are the properties used in the other ingredients? It's just the super mining gear property and the non-decreasing of this big M. And the homogeneous. The homogeneous is actually not a, a not essential. Uh, we, we could throw it away, but uh, using it, it will be uh, easier to, to write this paper. So uh, why do we say about this? Uh, why we call that our main conclusion is that um, if a subclass defines Y randomness, it means that a single member of that, of that class can do so. Uh, because if a subclass, if a subclass M defines Y randomness, uh, it means Alice does not has a winning strategy for this constant game, uh, even when baby just present one super molecule. Uh, this means the super mining gear that baby used against Alice is very, very flexible. So every string as numerous, this super mining gear is capable of catching up. And uh, as long as Alice does not numerate all the strings, the, the cost of this, this, the money spent by this super mining gear uh, is less than $1. So this means this super mining gear is really, really uh, very, very, very flexible. Uh, but with that said, uh, we cannot turn this into a concrete proof of, of this 2.1. Uh, so where is the, so where do we fail? So let's uh, look at this constant game. Uh, at this game, Alice is supposed to enumerate strings at a fixed level. Uh, this is not necessary in the, in, in, the, in the real game. In the real game, the Martin loop test set Vn, it does not necessarily uh, belongs to a fixed level, right? It can, it can, it is just a subset of two to the less than omega. So even if, uh, even if baby can win every of this game, that it may not mean that she, he can win uh, the game in the infinite board. But this part is, uh, is easy to overcome. We can use the compactness argument and uh, actually we can show that if, if baby can win each of these constant game, at each level, then there is a winning strategy of baby uh, winning the game on the infinite on the infinite board. 
And that winning strategy is just a point-wise limit of the winning strategy uh, on this on this finite level. So winning strategy is essentially a function mapping a game history to an action. So it makes sense to talk about the point-wise limit of this of these winning strategies. And uh, so where do we feel? Uh, what we can show is that this limit, this point-wise limit winning strategy of baby is computable. A uh, baby is a uh, the super molecule baby in the actual game presented is should be left to see. It should have some effectiveness, but this winning strategy we don't know uh, if it is computable. It is the limit of a sequence of computable function. So that's where we feel. But of course, we cannot. Uh, we do not know any uh, counter examples of of, of uh, where baby could win this finite game, but not the infinite, but not have a computable winning strategy for the infinite games. So that's the, that's the situation. Uh, I have uh, promised to talk about the relation, uh, why this question uh, is potentially related to the KL randomness question. Um, I would just say that it makes sense to talk about all these ingredients, all, all the ingredients of this proof in the KL randomness question. First, the Cal randomness question is also uh, can be also be seen as a game uh, between uh, Martin of test and uh, infinitely many KL betting machines, and uh, it also makes sense to study the finite version of those of, of that games. Uh, and uh, moreover, it makes sense to talk about these ingredients in that game. So uh, let's closely look at just the one ingredient in in our proof, uh, the iteration argument. Uh, this argument uh, sh shows the following. So given some parameters, ci, uh, this is game parameters, and this is the cost Alice is supposed to comply, and the uh, level, if Alice has a winning strategy for this game, such that the cost is smaller than this guy, then Alice has a winning strategy for, uh, for this game, for this harder game so that the cost is smaller than this guy. Uh, this is so-called uh, iteration argument. And let's see its proof. <clears throat> so uh, in this game, uh, we, will, we will have a main game played on level N0 and, uh, and uh, some sub game played over level N0. So the main game, in the main game, we invoke the winning strategy of, of, of this game. Of the C0 and 0 K game. But when the winning strategy tells you to enumerate a string row, uh, you don't do it. Uh, instead of enumerating it, you will play the winning strategy of this game uh, at this board. So uh, this, this is the sub game. Uh, hopefully, this sub game will, will force that the winning criterion will force that. Um, the money baby spent on this row uh, is bigger than C1. So if this happens, then this, this event is a valid response to, in, to enumerating this guy uh, in, in, in this case by a scaling factor. Uh, we originally, in, in our original definition of the game, we, we require this guy uh, to be greater or equal than one, but now it's C1, so it's a scaling, the scaling game scaled by the factor C1. And this winning criterion is also scaled by the C1. Scaled by the C1. So this is uh, the iteration argument. And uh, I think it makes sense to talk about this argument in the KL randomness question. Uh, but we, we don't know how to carry it out and because um, the non-monotone non -monotonous of KL randomness question um, prevents such kind of uh, iteration argument. Uh, actually, all the ingredients of our proof uh, has this kind of uh, iteration structures. Uh, for So we want to show that if Alice has a winning strategy for, for this game, then she has a winning strategy for the previous game. So, to, to do this, uh, when playing the previous game, uh, we have a main game and a sub game, and the sub game is usually uh, in, in, in the main game or the sub game, we apply, uh, we will uh, invoke the winning strategy of this uh, easier game. 
and shows that uh, Alice can achieve her goal for this previously. So it's like accumulating smaller targets into a big one and into a bigger one and into a yet bigger one. So. Uh, in the end of this talk, uh, uh, I would also like to mention some uh, further results concerning the possible Hausdorff dimension and packing dimension of the reels on which uh, some certain subclass does not succeed, uh, where we take this subclass as 2i betting superbounding fields. And uh, actually, uh, No, uh, this this should this should not be, uh, this should be um, this should be two to the minus, n over two. Uh, it should be, yeah. It is this is a, it's a typo. <clears throat> if uh, we can show that Alice has a winning strategy for this class, uh, with a cost, uh, roughly speaking, is two to the minus n over, n over two, um. Because of this, we can show that there is a real x with the dimension with Hausdorff dimension being one over two, so that no two i betting that the CE superbounding gills succeed on x. So this generalized Mushnik's result uh, in another directions, and uh, moreover, this is also optimal for every real whose Hausdorff dimension is smaller than this guy. Uh, there is a 2i betting left say super money kill succeeding on x. Uh, for 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 this for this for this 2i betting super money kills, uh, we has a more complicated winning strategy on a very small board, uh, which is level two. And and even with this parameter c equals to one. So you can force baby to spend as much as $1. Although at the strings you enumerate, baby only has to catch up as $1. And the cost is, uh, is uh, smaller or equal to, to this guy. So among four strings, you only need to enumerate three of them to win this game. Uh, using this result, we can show that there is a real whose packing dimension is this guy. So that no two-way betting, let's say super money gills, succeed on x. Uh, this packing dimension uh, is defined like this, as a premium of the complexity over n. So, uh, so we have left some open questions uh, concerning if there is uh, some general method to show that uh, given a subclass big M of left <clears throat> of left C supermarine queues, and the real D, uh, if there is a real X, so that the host of dimension of X is smaller than D, and that there is no member of M succeeding on X. So I think that's all, and uh, thank you very much for joining.
Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so I said uh, it's uh, computable in a str stronger, uh, str stronger sense. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a controversial. Uh, uh, but I think uh, people create those randomness notion to, uh, because, but, well, anyway, um, I think people are not very satisfied with um, the effectiveness of, of, of Martin Lip test, I, I guess. But it is controversial if, if you think it's a, it's a good it's a good one. It's a, I think it's no no one can say it's not a good one. So, but but I have the impression that um, people create those randomness notion to find some more effective objects to define uh, randomness by randomness this notion. You're welcome. Thank you.